Welcome to PGOG postgraduate class in obstetrics and gynecology. And today's topic is endometriosis. And we will uh, first consider the pathogenesis and classifications of endometriosis as a part one. Definition of endometriosis is it is a chronic gynecological disease with presence of endometrium like tissue. So remember that it is not presence of endometrium. <coughs> Excuse me, but what we say is a presence of endometrium like tissue at a site apart from inner lining of body of uterus, which usually induces inflammatory response and it usually leads to pain and infertility. So, first three lines are more important as definition of endometriosis. Peculiarities of endometriosis are symptoms do not match with the severity of the disease. So if a patient has got a superficial small peritoneal lesions, she can be extremely suffering with severe pain. On the other hand, a patient who has a large endometrioma, ovarian endometriosis might remain absolutely asymptomatic for many years. It is a estrogen dependent disease, which is of reproductive age group mainly. There is usually a delay in diagnosis of eight to 10 years from symptom onset even in the hands of the good centers and good gynecologist. It has unfortunately no diagnostic laboratory test. It has a complex unclear. It has heterogeneous presentation in the sense that one patient might be having only ovarian mass as an ovarian endometrioma. Another one might be having a deep infiltrating rectovaginal septal disease with a presentation mainly only as dyspareunia and no other feature. And another one might be having multiple peritoneal lesions. So presentation differs from patient to patient. It is a chronic disease which has a tendency for progression as well as for recurrence after the treatment. It profoundly reduces quality of life. It is a benign disease but it is locally invasive. So though it is benign, it has a property for local invasion as well as it, it can metastasize by lymphatics or blood vessels to distant organs. So the terminology which is used when we uh, describe endometriosis is normal, normally situated endometrium is called as utopic endometrium Whereas the endometrial like tissue which is present outside, it is called as ectopic endometrium. If we see the broad types of endometriosis, we can divide it into pelvic and extra pelvic type of endometriosis and pelvis itself. This, this is called as a phenotypic classification or types of endometriosis and it is very important to appreciate and to remember these three variants in the pelvic cavity itself. It can, there can be a peritoneal endometriosis which is superficial, uh, presence of endometriosis superficial uh, in a superficial plane of peritoneum. There can be presence of ovarian mass because of endometriosis. So where ovarian endometriosis is called as endometrioma. Previously, it was called as chocolate cyst, but it is better terminology is endometrioma because chocolate cyst, chocolate colored uh, content of the cyst fluid can even be seen with the functional, functioning, functional ovarian tumors or even cyst adenomas whenever there is a bleeding and whenever there is an absorption of fluid component that can lead to a presence of a chocolate color of fluid. So chocolate cyst is, was used previously, but now the bit. Terminology which is more commonly used is endometrioma. And in the pelvis itself, the third type is phenotypic type of endometriosis is deep infiltrating endometriosis where it infiltrates the tissue we are at more than 5 millimeter of the depth. So though it is a benign disease, it locally infiltrates as well as it metastasizes to the various parts of the body. In that sense, it is also one of the additional peculiarity of this disease. Extra pelvic can be in the peritoneal cavity or distance such as anywhere, lung, brain or even extremities, all parts of the body ex except uh, spleen are said to be 
affected by endometriosis with a possibility of getting affected by endometriosis. It can be asymptomatic in uh, women or it can be associated with two major presentations. First is a pelvic pain and second is infertility. Pelvic pain can be present as chronic pelvic pain where we, it is said that the pain in lower abdomen below the umbilicus definition of chronic pelvic pain which is lasting for more than six months. It can present as dysmenorrhea or it can present as dyspareunia. So pain and infertility, pelvic pain and infertility, these are the two major presentations of this disease. Retrograde menstruation is the first uh, theory which uh, explains why endometriosis takes place. It is called as a Samson theory, which Samson proposed in 1927. And Samson is uh, called as father of endometriosis as he coined even given the name to the disease as endometriosis. So by this theory, the endometrial cells are being carried in a as a retrograde menstruation through the fallopian tube. And then they are getting implanted in the various pelvic tissues, ori, pelvic peritoneum, posterior surface of uterus, uterosacral ligaments. So these are the common sites where, commonest sites where we get the endometriosis. Now this is called as a transplantation theory or theory of retrograde menstruation. The points which favor this theory are it is most common in dependent endometriosis is most common in dependent areas of the pelvis. Whenever there is obstructive mullerian anomalies, then it, it, it is associated with presence of endometriosis in young women. So more of retrograde menstruation as there is obstruction to the outflow tract and that is associated with more uh, occurrence of prevalence of endometriosis in these young girls, even adolescent girls, endometriosis is seen in these patients. It is most common with or more common with early menarche and with frequent cycles or heavy menstrual bleeding. So these are the points which favor this transplantation theory. Points which go against this are this transplantation theory cannot explain extra pelvic sites of endometriosis. Transtubal menstrual uh, regurgitation is observed in majority of the women, 80%. Whereas if we see the endometriosis, the prevalence of endometriosis in general, uh, reproductive age women is around 10%. So that means you know, regurgitation and men menstrual regurgitation alone cannot explain the occurrence of endometriosis. Utopic and ectopic endometrium, they do differ morphologically as well as functionally. So this point also goes against this theory, Samson's theory of retrograde menstruation or transplantation theory. Other proposed mechanisms are silomic metaplasia theory. It explains the endometriosis at pleura, lungs, pericardium, inguinal canal, umbilicus, urinary and digestive tracts and extremities also. Because here the silomic epithelial cells are getting carried away in the intrauterine life to all these sites and there is a possibility that these silomic cells are being getting converted with the metaplasia into endometrium like cells. Induction theory is the same, it is further extension of silomic metaplasia theory where metaplasia is induced by some chemical irritant or unknown irritating factor. Lymphatic transmission and vascular transmission theory explains the presence of endometriosis at the sites which are in the, in the far areas away from the pelvis. And there is, uh, the, it, is, it has been observed that scar endometriosis is seen as a, because of the direct transplantation of endometriotic cells and scar endometriosis is seen commonly after the, seen at a caesarean section scar. Now all these theories still do not explain the pathogenesis of the disease completely. And so we have other two, that is the immunological theory and second is a genetic theory. So immunological factors and inflammation 
which are involved in the pathogenesis of endometriosis are there is altered cell mediated as well as humoral mediated. So what it leads to is there is a decre decrease in the clearance of regurgitated endometrial cells by NK cells, natural killer cells as well as by macrophages. There is increased inflammatory response. It is because of this increased inflammatory response. Now whenever there is an endometriosis, these endometriotic like cells are responding to the hormone. There is mainly the proliferative change which is seen during the menstrual cycle. Secretory change is usually not seen. But during menstruation, there is some oozing of the menstrual blood even at, it, at the ectopic site also. This menstrual blood irritates the surrounding tissues and produces the inflammatory response. So there is increase in peritoneal fluid volume as well as increasing WBCs in the peritoneal fluid. There is increase in inflammatory cyto cytokines, growth factors, and angiogenesis promoting factors. So all these indicate association of immunological component in the pathogenesis of uh, endometriosis. Next component in the pathogenesis is genetic component or the genetic factors involved in the pathogenesis. But there is not a there is no single gene defect observed in patients with endometriosis. Multiple genes are involved, each having a very small contribution to the risk. So there are many genes which are involved, and as a cumulative action of the these many genetic abnormalities, there is a development of the disease. Single gene is not involved. There is usually a 50% contribution because of the genetic factor and 50% contribution because of the environmental factors which leads to the initiation or occurrence of the disease. There are additive effects of germline variants, somatic variants and environmental factors and these additive effects lead to the development of the disease. What do you mean by germline variants is germline variants are transmitted by parents and this is uh, supported by the observation that first degree relatives of um, are, are at greater risk for development of endometriosis and endometriosis is usually seen as clusters in families. What is somatic variance is you know, uh, genetic abnormalities which are seen in the endometriotic cells showing genetic variations which are not transmitted by parents. There can be aneuploidies, there can be Reploidies, or there can be other form of genetic uh, mutations can be observed in the endometriotic uh, tissue cells themselves. This, these mutations affect the apoptosis or natural cell program cell death of regurgitated endometrial cells. So because the apoptosis is getting affected, these endometrial cells do remain for a longer time, time on the surface and then they are, these are invading and developing the endometriotic lesions is the theory behind this genetic factor responsible for the pathogenesis. As here we can see that there can be contribution of factor in each patient in a various proportion. Some might be having a greater proportion say, of germline variants, whereas others might be having a greater proportion of environmental factors. So each patient can have a or different pathogenesis and that is why pathogenesis is not clear. very it is complex and even presentations are also variable risk factors for endometriosis which have been identified are nulliparity infertility early menarche frequent cycles heavy menstrual bleeding cryptomenorrhea first degree relative having endometriosis even a presence of a pinpoint cervix, some studies have shown to be the risk factor. High fat diet and high intake of red meat, red meat. Tall and thin women are more, more have, a, have a greater risk of developing endometriosis. Even red hair is said to be a risk factor. It is more commonly observed in Asians uh, as compared to the white and least commonly observed in black women. So racial differentiation is also there. Heavy consumption of alcohol and caffeine is the risk factor. Small for the woman who herself is small for gestational age baby or is one of the multiple pregnancy baby. That is also 
risk factor. On the other hand, protective factors are multiparity, pregnancy, lactation, increased body mass index, increased waist hip ratio, diet rich in vegetables and fruits, smoking, and regular exercise. Classification and staging systems of endometriosis, we have at present three classification systems. First is called as RAS, ASRM. ASRM is American Society for Reproductive Medicine, which was previously known as American Fertility Society. This classification was also called as AFS classification. Now it is called as ASRM. R is uh, for revised. It has been revised in 1996. Then there is an enzyme classification which was introduced in 2005 and last is endometriosis fertility index which was introduced in 2010. American Society of Reproductive Medicine classification, the revised one, it is to be documented during surgery for this either laparoscopy or laparotomy needs to be done. Whenever that surgery is done for endometriosis, then the disease is uh, staged and based on this ASRM classification. Basically, there are th this classification, what we observe, there are three components. First component is of how, where, how, how are the endometriotic lesions. Second is how is the pouch of Douglas, whether it is obliterated or free. And third is whether there are adhesions. For endometriotic lesions, these endometriotic lesions, uh, when we put a, in a laparoscope or when we do the laparotomy, laparoscopy is uh, more commonly done in for patients of endometriosis. So first, we have to observe the endometriotic lesions. are divided as per this classification as red, white, and black lesions, and we have to see observe the both the ovaries for presence of endometriomas. Then we go for pouch of Douglas, whether it is obliterated partially or completely. And we have to see for the pelvic adhesion, especially around the tube, uh, both sided and around the ovaries, both sided. Accordingly, we have to give the score, depending on what is the, how much is the size of the endometriotic lesions. Well, less than 1 cm, 1 to 3 and more than 3 cm. And depending on whether the these lesions are superficial or deep. For peritoneal lesions, the score for superficial is 1 to 4 as well as for ovary superficial lesions, score is same, 1 to 4. So for all superficial lesions, score starts as 1 to 4. Whereas for deep peritoneal, it is 2, 4, 6. How I remember is multiplied by this upper one by 2 except the last one, which is 6, it is not 8. Here, how I remember 4, 16, 20 is multiply 1 by 4, so that you get 4. Further multiply by 4, you get 16 and add 4, you get 20. That is how I have remembered, you have to find out your own way of, uh, your own method of how you will remember this. But you need to remember that for deeper ovarian endometriotic lesions, the score is 4, 16, 20. For, uh, depending on the size, less than 1, 1 to 3 centimeters, more than 3 centimeters. Maximum score endometriotic lesions will be 46 because both sided 20, 20, say patient has got more than 3 centimeters endometriomas on both the sides. It will be 40. And it's, uh, suppose patient has even the uh, deeper uh, peritoneal endometriotic lesions of more than 3 centimeters, then the total score will be 46. Now, though it seems complicated, if you are for, for postgraduates, my request is you yourself write down this two, three times so that then it becomes easy for you to understand. And the under, main thing in understanding the classification is there is greater emphasis given for ovarian endometriosis. So that if it is a ovarian endometriotic endometrioma, which is one to three centimeter also, then score is 60 more than 3 cm score is 20. So more as compared to peritoneal, greater score has been given to endometrioma or ovarian endometriosis. 
pouch of Douglas to see if it is a partially obliterated pouch of Douglas score is 4 and complete obliteration there is sudden increase in the score to 4040. Adhesions also as same way we have seen endometriotic lesions for adhesions also there are three categories. Adhesions involving less than one third of tube or ovary, one third to two third or more than two third. So for endometriotic lesions we have so we had peritoneum and ovary as the two sides whereas for adhesions we have fallopian tubes and ovaries as the two sides. Filmy adhesions score is 1 to 4. Dense adhesions score is 4, 8, 16. Here you can remember that we have to mul multiply the upper figure by 4. 1 to 4 is always, always the initial score. Maximum score for adhesions will be 64 considering two right and left fallopian tube and right and left sided ovary. Total maximum score endometriotic lesions we had already seen 46 is the maximum. Pouch of Douglas 40 is maximum and adhesion 64 is maximum. So total maximum score by, by this ASRM classification is 150. This is diagrammatic representation endometriotic lesions we see at uh, two sides one is peritoneum and other is ovary. For peritoneum it is 1, 2, 4 and 2, 4, 6 for superficial and dense uh, superficial and deeper lesions respectively whereas for ovaries it is 1, 2, 4 and 4, 16, 20 for superficial and deeper endometriotic lesions. This is pouch of Douglas. Complete obliteration is 4, 0 and partial obliteration is 4. Now here as you can see adhesions. If adhesions are involving uh, how much is the tube which is getting affected by the adhesions. See here it is 1 third to 2 third. So and if the adhesions are dense score will be 8. That is one example. One additional point here is irrespective of the involvement of the fallopian tube, rest of the fallopian tube, if femory are completely covered by adhesions, as you can see here, then the maximum score of 16 is given. Even if remaining tube is not showing the presence of adhesions, if femorial adhesions are present and femorial obliteration is complete because of the adhesions, then the maximum score of 16 is given, even if rest of the fallopian tube is not covered by the adhesions. Now, after noti noting now when a laparoscopic surgeon is doing a laparoscopy in endometriosis, the surgeon will be declaring endometriotic lesions, whether superficial or deep in the peritoneum, whether whether superficial or deep on the ovary, then about pouch of the glass and about adhesions over the fallopian tubes or over the ovaries. And depending on that, the score will be calculated. If the spinal, spinal score is 0 to 5, then it is a stage 1 endometriosis. If final score is 6 to 15, it is stage 2. 16 to 40 is stage 3. And more than 40 is stage 4 endometriosis. endometriosis. So endometriosis is divided as stage 1, 2, 3, 4, depending on the calculated score by ASRA. Now, since as I have said, it has been revised many a times and last revision of this ASRM was done in 1994 and since many decades this classification is in circulation and being used by the clinicians all over the world, whenever the patient is diagnosed as a patient of endometriosis and whenever surgery is being done, either laparoscopy or laparotomy. The points in favor of this classification are because most of accepted all over the world. And this is also needed further whenever we do the third classification that is endometriosis fertility index. For this, that also we need this ASRM classification. Points which go against this classification as it has very high intra as well as inter observer variability. It does not correlate with the symptoms, especially the pain. And it also fails to correlate with the prognosis for pregnancy. Even a stage 1 disease patient also might be facing same uh, possibility of having uh, infertility as a stage 4 
patient having endometriosis. So staging is not correlating with prognosis for pregnancy, nor neither for the uh, symptoms, especially the presence or absence of severe pain. This is staging and these two main presentations do not correlate and it there is so much of inter and intra observer variability that same person might be declaring a different score at the for the same patient or different people if are given to see for that then there is also a possibility of variability or a change from person to person second classification is ncn classification 2005 which was introduced in the uh, conference which was held at Austria in 2005. It is, it is specially designed for to assess the deep infiltrating endometriosis and it is not as a competition to ASRM but it is it has been introduced as a supplement to ASRM classification. It has four compartments and three levels A, B, C and F. These are the four compartments. A is the mainly for the recto-vaginal space and vagina. And the presence of endometriosis at recto-vaginal space and vagina. B is for uterosacral ligaments and lateral cardinal ligaments, that is the matting rod ligaments and even the pelvic wall. So, and C is mainly for the rectum and for the um, sigmoid colon. F is for the presence apart from these three pelvic sites such as if A is for adenomyosis, if U is for involvement of ureter, intrinsic involvement, not the ureteric obstruction because of the adhesions. B is the presence of endometriosis in bladder. I is presence of endometriosis in intestine above the level of the sigmoid colon. And O is for the other side such as lung or umbilicus or other or distant or even brain for that O is the FO indicates that. So, FA, FU, FB, FI, and FO. These are the four compartments. A compartment, rectovaginal space and vagina. B, uterosacral ligament, cardinal ligament. C, rectum. And F is far. The presence which is usually at a site which is far away. So, that is why F. Except for adenomyosis which is in vicinity, all the others are at a distant place usually. All these are all the types of the deep infiltrating endometriosis. Second thing which needs to be noted is what level. Level 1 is size of the lesion is less than 1 cm. Level 2 is 1 to 3 cm. Level 3 is more than 3 cm is the size of this deep infiltrating endometriotic lesion. The third <clears throat> classification or staging system is called as endometriosis fertility index which was introduced in 2010. It has two components. One is based on history is called as historical factors. Two factors. One is based on history, historical factors where we have age, duration of infertility and history of pre previous pregnancy as the three factors. There are three surgical factors which are to be noted at the end of surgery. That means when we are operating on a case of endometriosis and we finish the, um, we are at the end of the surgery. We do, we have done all the therapeutic interventions. At that time, what we note are these surgical factors where we have least function score, then endometriosis score as per RASRM endometriosis score and a total ASRM score. RASM score which is total. So these are the three surgical factors to be documented at the end of surgery. Now this is historical score based on history for age less than or equal to 35 the score is no, higher score is there score of 2 for 36 to 39 years 1 and whenever a patient's age is 40 or above its score of 0. Duration of infertility more than 3, again 0, but less than or equal to 3 is 2. Previous pregnancy, if history of previous pregnancy is there, then score of 1, no such history, score of 0. So here also you can see that maximum score is of 5. 
two for age, two for duration of infertility, and one for the previous pregnancy. Now, what is this least function score? Is we have to observe three tissues, ovary structures, the ovary tube, and fimbria, and accordingly we have to give a score for each. If it is completely uh, there is no dysfunction and it is absolutely normal score of 4 is given and when it is absent or there is absolutely no function score of 0 is given and then we have severe dysfunction moderate and mild dysfunction score of 1 2 and 3 respectively so we one has to note on both the side right side and left side one has to give the score for ovary tube and fimbria whichever is the least score that score is to be brought down for the final calculation for example, suppose ovary has a score of 3, tube has a score of 2, and fimbria has a score of, say, 1. Then least is 1 here, so what will be given, taken here, finally will be 1. Similarly, for left side, say it is 3, 2, 3, then 2 will be brought down, and total will be 1 plus 2 as 3. So remember that it, the total is there, the score which is considered at the end is not the addition of these but whichever is the least is brought down whichever shows the least function so that the total least function is the total least function of right as well as left side whichever is having the least is taken into consideration now lf score least function score 7 or 8 then the score which is given is 3. If it is 4 to 6, score is 2. 1 to 3, the score of 0 is given. In the endometriotic lesion uh, classification by ASIRM, if the score is le less than 16, then the patient gets a point, 1 point. And if it is more than or equal to 16, then it is 0. Similarly, less than seven, 71 total score out of 150, then score of 1 more than or equal to 71 out of 150 score of 0. So here also 5 is the maximum, 3 for least function, 1 for the endometriotic score by ASRM and 1 for the total score by ASRM. So, so total score of 5 is for surgical and 5 for the historical based on the history. This endometriosis fertility index is done after surgical treatment of endometriosis. So whenever we are operating and we have completed the surgery, then one has to evaluate the patient for endometriosis fertility index. It needs revised ASRM, American Society for Reproductive Medicine classification needs to be documented. There are five points for historical score and five points are for surgical score. So maximum points are 10 score ranges from 0 to 10 chances of pregnancy will be more as the score is more so higher score is better it predicts pregnancy without ivf that is natural conception then if it is ef this score endometriosis fertility index is zero then the possibility of getting pregnancy is 25 percent for the given patient on the other hand if efi is 9 to 10 the chances for the pregnancy, they do increase to 75%. So that is how it helps us in prognostication for a given patient as far as her chances for pregnancy without IVF go. World Endometriosis Society 2017 has given the guidelines where it, the, by, according to these guidelines, each endometriosis surgery must document all these three, especially ASRM, revised ASRM for all the patients whenever there is a laparoscopy is being done. This classification is mandatory for all endometriosis cases. Whenever there is a possibility of uh, this deep infiltrating endometriosis based on the patient's uh, uh, symptoms, signs, or investigations such as MRI or ultrasonography, transvaginal sonography then the, the, in these cases even preoperatively we can go for MRI or transvaginal sonographically go for this NGM classification and during surgery also we need to go for that so it will help in planning the surgery whenever it will be done preoperatively whenever the patient wants to conceive 
whenever there is endometriosis and patient has infertility then this documentation of endometriosis fertility index is also has been made mandatory by this world endometriosis society so why we should know all these three is when we document all these then the clear information is obtained a better picture emerges whenever all these classification systems are used in a single given patient depending on whether there is a presence of deep then we go for ncn or patient needs or uh, has infertility then we go for efi it also helps for better understanding of the disease by patient herself whenever we explain the disease depending on these three classification systems thank you next class we will see diagnosis and management of a case of endometriosis